What's going on, everybody? Roll Tide to everyone in the chat as you come in and bring the numbers up. We welcome you to tonight's podcast, Coaches, Monday Night Football with the Coaches, man. Hey, y'all, this is off of a, a, a Alabama dub, man, like a real Alabama dub, like, like a real one, not like one where we barely got away, but a real one. So tonight, man, we're excited. We're excited to be with you all. Shouts out to Kyle Henderson. And Bama Football on YouTube, man, for allowing us to be here on tonight, man. We thank you all as the fans for showing up every week. I'm your host, one of your panelists, Coach Smook. And we have to my right, your left, or my left, your right, however it is on your screen, my brother, Coach Jay. <laughs> man, what's going on, Coach Jay? How you doing today, brother? Uh, nothing much, man. Nothing much, man. Just finishing a long day. And, uh, man, just great to get talk some Bama Football, man. Just, I'm telling you, man, there's, there's some excitement I haven't felt in a, in a while. And... Hopefully we can keep the momentum going in Mississippi State. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And down below us, y'all see him, man. Unk himself. Coach Sean, how you doing today, brother? I'm doing good, man. Blessed. Blessed and highly favored. Better than I deserve, man. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, man. And just shout out to everybody in the chat. We see some comments in the chat already. Shout out to High Power TV, Roll Tide in the chat. Trey Lop, Troy Lop, Roll Tide, and Cassandra. Roll Tide in the chat. Shout out to the Big 27 in the chat. We appreciate y'all for showing up tonight. Let's get into this game. Let's just dive into it. You all know how we start this show off. We just go ahead and just finally just, you know, finally digest the past week's uh past week's performance for our team. And so, Coach Sean, you know, you 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 give us give us your final thoughts, your final reactions, how you felt about that game and, and what you see about this team going forward. I feel good about it. I feel good about it, man, because like like me and Coach Jay said the other night, man, after the South Florida game, I was utterly disgusted, you know. So I feel good about this win, man. Anytime you can go and get a win against another SEC opponent, no matter who it is, you got to be happy with that. Uh, it could have easily went the other way. We put out poor effort. But to see the way the defense played, man, to see the way the defense played, to see the way they used Jalen in the second half, to see the offensive line get an opportunity to lean on those guys and impose our will in the run game and to hold Ole Miss to that amount of points, man. Hey, you take away that one bad read, which I thought was a bad call, run the high low that close to the goal line. I've always I was always taught not to run high lows in the red zone or anywhere near not inside the 20s. Yeah. So to you take that play away, man. Very efficient throwing the ball. Very good defensive play. I was I was happy. I can't even lie about it. I was happy. Right, right. Coach Jay, final thoughts, man, going forward. How, I mean, not going forward, but final thoughts on the game as a whole, man. Um, disappointed, you know, disappointing first half, excellent second half. Um, I'm just I'm still kind of wrapping my head of like what how in the absolute where was this effort against Texas? Where was the, and that and that defensively? Because I don't blame the I mean the defense was I, I thought what the defense took it up another notch. In the second half of the first half, they were really excellent as well. But what with the offensive effort? Where was this offensive line against South Florida? Where was this offensive line? I don't even, I would even say against Middle Tennessee State. Where was this offensive line against South Florida? It's just like what what happened in the second half? And again, maybe maybe I talked about it last uh, on 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 Saturday. But was it because of the Miro? Was he the one that sparked that ignition? Because I mean, you know, it, it, I mean, if that is, that's a great case. But now, can we carry that momentum? going into not just Mississippi State, but for the rest of our SEC schedule, because we are on thin ice. Uh, you know, Georgia has time to relax with their schedule, right? They can take some days off with that schedule that they have, which is the JV schedule. We don't have time to take any days off. We we're, we are on thin ice. We cannot afford to lose another game. If we're trying to, not trying to make the playoffs, but trying to win this division right now, we cannot afford to lose another game in SEC play. And uh, the good thing is, is that this team now has film. Right. There's and it's not just any film, not the bad film. It's positive film work, dominant film work that they can try to take a look at. And uh, we can try to carry that over. And, and um, so today, like I said, I don't mind hearing the players talk right now, but let's 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 keep it up. Let, let's keep it up. Well, matter of fact, I, I'll be honest with you, I kind of don't want the players to talk at all right now. I think that we need to keep it up. Um, I think we need to. There's a lot of positive things going into next week. But, yeah, we just got to keep up the hard work. That was a phenomenal second half and really good adjustments by Tommy Reese. But offensively, we just got to continue to improve. There's positive film work. Let's just carry that over to Mississippi State. Yeah, man. And I'm, I'm going to coincide with both you guys, man. I'm, I'm more than satisfied 
with that second half performance by the team as a whole, satisfied with the defensive performance for the whole game. You know, the defense, um, yeah, we gave up plays, but there were immediate adjustments being made. And we're going to dive into those things later in the show. But um, also with Jalen Miro and his confidence and his growth during the game, before I finish my statement, shout out to the big 1999 from DeMarco Brooks. Love this show. Shout out to Kyle for bringing you three on. New Coach Jay on Jan Sports before finding Coach Smook on the Bama Standard ranting about B.O.B. being a cancer. Shout out to Marco. <laughs> That's my guy. I remember Marco, man. Then I found Coach Sean getting praise from Coach Smook. Facts, man. Hey, these are my bros, man. We've been <laughs> we've been going, we've been rocking together for three years. But yeah, so um, but yeah, like I was saying from this game, man, and shout out again to Marco for that super chat. This game here, Appreciate you, DeMarco. yeah, facts. For real. Th- this game here, not only did it answer a lot of questions, but it also solidified, like you were saying, Coach Jay, that talk that they were talking about. I saw offensive line physicality, missed a few missed assignments early, but I saw physicality the whole game. I seen Dalacor get beat a few plays, but then Dalacor dominated majority of the plays when he, when he had, especially on run blocking. We need to let that guy run block. It hides a lot of his flaws. Um, same thing with Proctor. Proctor in the run game was so effective, man. Even Jace's uh, touchdown, if you pay attention, Proctor held him up. Like, Jace was stumbling. Proctor picked him up and didn't. Looked around. As soon as he picked him up, he's looking around for somebody blocks. That second level intensity was was big for us offensively and defensively, man. I think Kevin Steele just continued to make adjustments on the fly, which kept Lane Kiffin guessing. And I don't think a lot of coordinators that have seen Alabama's defense in the past, I want to say three or four seasons, I don't think they're going to be able to uh, be used to the type of adjustments Kevin Steele is making the, and how quick he's making them. So that's my final take. And chat, in, in in the chat, man, you all give y'all final takes as we continue on with the show, man. Just how you all feeling about not just individuals, because we can highlight individuals we will tonight, but as a team, I can honestly say, and I think I could speak for the panel, this is the first time in about three or four years after a game where I felt like we played – solid competition and we actually won the game we we went through our process we went through our ups and downs and we won the game so i'm excited man um guys i mean let's let's dive into it let's let's dive into some key takeaways from this game okay um one of the things that we we both you all already said it the offensive play calling um coach sean take it away What, what did you see let me do some numbers before we jump into these all right, so in, in, in the first half, we were in um in second and six less uh six or less 13 times. Yeah. Um 10 out of those 13 times, we were able to convert anytime we were in second and six or less. Same thing in the second half. Four out of six, we were able to convert. So that um that led to those that consistency we want to see. Out of those um 19 second and six or lesses, we ran the ball on 14 of those downs so that tells you that tommy reese is paying attention to these schematics and the statistics that play into our favor which is something that we want to see that's one highlight i wanted to um talk about coach sean talk about some of the offensive adjustments you were happy to see with uh this play calling when it came to this this offense this week i was happy to see us get out of that five wide you know i was I, i was happy to see second half that we didn't try to to throw the ball so much you know what i mean i was happy to see us go tight ends i'm gonna tell you somebody who i'm excessively proud of and this dude really showed me something i knew he could play i knew he could play man i knew he had hidden skills that we weren't taking advantage of robbie oots man Mm -hmm. that boy robbie oots went up and caught that thing good hands good soft hands man i like that man i love to see a big tight end who can block and catch the intermediate routes so I'm really happy at how Tommy used um, Jalen the second half. Outside of those those one or two foo pars we had in the red zone, I was really, really, really happy that we decided to line up and let those guys let Jace eat coming off tackle. You know, run downhill at these guys. If you notice, they linebackers did not want to tackle in the fourth quarter. They did, did not, man. If you look, those guys had hands on their hips. They were whiffing on tackles. We have the offensive line to do that you know what i mean it's gonna take a special kind of defense to stop us from doing that and you know when you really look at it man outside of the turnovers we all know the ups and downs that we're that we're gonna have the small ups the small downs i personally am making a case right now for texas to be the number one team in the country to me 
Texas has looked better than anybody. They got the best win, and they have, you know, they had a they had a sleepwalking game against Wyoming, which to be expected after a big game like Alabama. But Baylor, contrary to what you might think about their record, is Baylor's a good, a, a tough squad to beat, man. They also they're offensively very very well. They're tough on defense. We they got a few losses, but you're just not going to walk into Baylor and just beat them like that unless you're a very good team, man. I think Texas to me right now is playing the best of anybody. So when you look at how we played against those guys, man, and the amount of uh, self-inflicted wounds that we had, I you know I'm not I'm not upset with where we're at right now. You know I'm not, man. You know if as long as Tommy Reese uh, as an offense. I think we need to run. I told Kyle before the game uh, Saturday, I called into a show. I said, if we just give these guys a chance, be patient with the run, run the ball, everything else will open up, man. It'll help Jalen down the road. It'll help our offensive line get into a rhythm. And that's what he done the second half. I think Saban might have said something to him because the first half, kind of like what Coach Jay was saying, we were all over the place, man. We were all over the place. It's almost like we were back to trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. So, I'm really happy about how we uh, use our physicality and open and let the run game take care of everything else. Yeah, man. And, and you said a mouthful um, when it came to just how Jalen Miro was confident. I could hear confidence in the play calling. You get what I'm saying? And that was yeah. a key thing that that had to happen in order for this offense to begin to progress. And we saw from the beginning the run game, the the reliability on the run game, the the Patience to stick with the run game as much as we did early in the game was very, very impressive. And I think that helped the offense see how key they are to the success of this offense, which when you're talking about establishing an identity with uh, offense that, you know, new coordinator, new starting quarterback, guys in receiver positions playing bigger roles than they had to play last year. Um, your back's probably your best group, a, a group that you could lean on as far as getting offensive production, not just saying that they can run the ball, but they can produce. They Both backs were averaging, uh, I think uh, J- Jace ended the game averaging 5.3 and Roy Dell on, what what was it? Jance, you were muted. There you go. It was over six yards of carry. Okay. A little over six. And, and, and Roy Dell was right behind him with, not even the nearest amount of same amount of carries, but 4.2 yards or some something like that. So solid runs from the, the running game and solid blocking from the old line, especially when we ran in between the tackles. Right. I don't know why we try to extend, like get to the perimeter. I could understand why you call it once every seven yeah. or eight runs, you know, but in the moments when we called it, it was kind of questionable, but I understand it. Keep them honest. We're not in a bad position. The jet sweep was kind of was very questionable on the goal line in red zone. I mean, but other than that, man, I love numbers. Jay, I know you love numbers. Run pass ratio for this game: forty five run, twenty one pass. Four designed QB runs called this game. Three of them in the second half. Talk to me, Jay. How does that make you feel? Coach, let me ask you a question. When was the last time that we actually had a quarterback? What was the last time we had a run design play where the running back was the lead design runner and the quarterback is trying to run outside the perimeter? Guys, want- we haven't seen that <laughs> since the since the national championship game in 2017 when Tua Tagovailoa was doing that against Georgia when he was trying to set, uh, set up yeah. the kick position with uh, Andy pa- Andy Papanastas I- missed the field goal. We one, we one haven't more. Ran we, that- we did it with Mac. We did it with Mac Jones one Mac- time. Yeah, we did it with okay. Mac Jones one time because they it, one, it caught him time. off guard. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I remember Dave, he used to he used to run that sort of design play with Jalen Hurts with uh, mm-hmm. Tua was yeah. the backup court. I mean, we that was a frequent run play, and we don't run that at all until to, until again until obviously was back and 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 now we're you know that, that needs to be incorporated with Jalen Miro. That he like that we got to start running more design QB runs, get Miro more involved in the offense, but give these players, these skill position players, get them up more in the open. Like let's not continue to run, uh, continue to run outside the perimeter with these, with these sweeps and these draw plays. Like we got to start running more power. We got like, we got to start taking advantage of Robbie Oots and his skill set. how we can play out. He can play as an H back. He can play as an inline can play in the slot. We got to start taking more advantage of these guys and, and their blocking ability, especially with the guys like CJ Dupree and uh, Danny Lewis and the rest of these guys out there. But I just love the fact how it was just a power run game. Like you just said, 45 to 21 ratio. That's exceptional. And Caden Proctor, man, I know a lot of people were on him, including us. We were on him for a long time, but we knew 
that it's a pot that it was a huge possibility that we did not really utilize him to a skill set because instead of using him as that as that anchor as a pass blocker, he is not he's not developed quite yet at that particular level. That's going to take some time to grow. What he can do immediately is be dominant in the run game, especially in the par level. And that's what we saw tonight with Caden Proctor. We saw that with Booker. We saw Booker, who was named Offensive Lineman of the Week for the SEC. We saw that with, um, you know, Seth McLaughlin, who had a terrible first half, yes. but cleaned it up a little bit better in the second half. We'll probably talk about Seth in a minute. And then I'll get, and then like I said with Darion Delcourt, it just felt like we were just more in a comfort zone, especially in the second half when we just kept it simplistic. We didn't try to do anything out of the ordinary. We didn't try to experiment. We said, you know what? Let's play to Jalen Miro's strength. Let's play to what this offensive line can do and just run that ball downhill. Get this offensive line some confidence because when you start to gain, and I had and I had a problem with this against South Florida. Whenever we gained some sort of momentum with Rodell Williams, what happened? All of a sudden, when it was first and 10, we decided to pass the ball. And all of a sudden, now it's second and 15, and we just ruined the momentum. In mm -hmm. the second half, we leaned more towards the run game. And like you said, Jace averaged six point, uh, six point, I think two or 6.3 yards per carry, 17 carries on 105 yards. So that's what we need to start continuing to do. We got to start asserting dominance and build more confidence in this uh, in, in, in this offensive line. We got to start having some more belief because, you know, if, if this if, if if our coordinator starts to trust this offensive line more to kind of do their job and do their due diligence, I can guarantee you that's going to build more confidence in the passing game. That you know what we got this mentality that you know if we can dominate these guys and tire out and wear these guys down with our quote unquote. 330 pound average imagine again they're not going to have that much stamina they're not going to have that much energy and that much adrenaline when it comes to pass rushing sets that we're going to we're just going to bully them and throw them into the ground so i love what we did um obviously with the run play but obviously those quarterback design runs especially when i saw when jalen murrow on that power run with uh jay's blocking it as your lead blocker oh my 2017 national championship game was the first thing i thought of like we got to you know incorporate more of that into the offense we have to have anytime we try to get to the perimeter, we need to let Dupree be that that if they want to key on that, Dupree on the edge is the side we're gonna go to with the QB run. Because that Oost. dude, that dude is him and Ooze, they handle blocks. He, Lewis mm -hmm. and Knee Black are solid blockers now, but they don't they don't clean, they don't create, you know, space. Ooze got beat on one block, and it was it was not necessarily getting beat. He overextended. He 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 had the right technique. He just overextended, got on his toes a little too much, and lost his balance, and that resulted in in a small negative play. Nothing harmful. We weren't in no threat to lose. It was a first down play, you know. But other than that, you talking about perimeter blocking by the receivers. Also, um, even Jermaine Burton's hold. I like that effort because he was engaged in in a. I say get to the block earlier. Just you know, just as hard as you run those routes. Get to that block and break down early so you can square up better. But he made the adjustments because the next big run, if you look at Jason McClellan, guess who's blocking the corner out on the edge? Jermaine Burton. I mean, it's it's just the small things that are mattering to this team. Let's talk. Let's let's get a little bit more into these numbers, guys. Uh, Jalen Miro, 18 of 21 for passing. When's the last time Alabama has had a quarterback who's thrown over 15 passes in a game and had um more than 80 percent completion rate? Efficient. Efficient. You get what I'm saying? And, and and guess what? These weren't 21 passes where they were five yards and below. 14 of his passes were between 20, 10 and 17 yards. 14 of those passes. So, and he completed he completed 12 out of those 14. So the it's not that the guy doesn't have the arm talent. We were putting him in position by not allowing them to key on his eyes and his lack of ability to progress. And guess what? When he did have time, he did his progressions to check down to Jace, even though he was. 2.5 seconds late, he, he still made his progressions. He read the whole right side of the field way too long, which is what uh, an attest to a testament to our protection, our O line and their growth, and also his ability to start trusting that protection. His touchdown pass, he had to require it, it required a, a lot of trust in that offensive line for him to step into that throw and get it out to Jalen Hill, which was a key play in that game because the offensive line had good protection. That last man came late. While the offensive line was engaged, it was set up for five man protection. He had to trust it. They gave him the time, and he stood in there. And he, when he let that ball go, I saw the confidence in the throw. It wasn't like the Texas completion of Malik Benson across the middle, where he kind of just let it go. I saw the confidence in when he let the ball go, and it, it just it was a difference. So those numbers there, man, are just some of the ones I want to highlight for the offensive side. And of course, we if we want to talk about individuals, 
in the receiver group, our receivers are playing out of their mind, guys. And this is this goes to my point, guys. We have so many weapons in the wide receiver room. This is why I said we won't have a thousand yard receiver this year. We're going to have to rely on the run game, and the receivers are going to have to make those eighteen to twenty one plays a game. And you got eight or nine receivers that got to split up twenty some, you know, pass attempts. Or you know, at most twenty five, we're going to see 25, 30 pass attempts. So talk about that for us. Oh, Coach, you want me to go or you want uh, Sean to go? Before you Get do, on. before you do, shout out to Anthony Riggins, Big A. I think Tommy needs to address more plays from Miro, and I think we will be able to iron things out. It will open up more opportunities to spread the ball down the field. Facts. All facts, man. Shout out to my brother, I, Big A, it's Anthony Riggins. Huge Bama fan. Really, really, really support the program and support the show, man. We appreciate you. You know I love you to death, bro. Facts. Yeah, that's all facts, brother. Mm-hmm. That kind of that's kind of to what Coach Mook was just saying. I mean, right. it, it it all it goes hand in hand. That's a whole fact. You know what it is though? It's because the offense isn't stepping. They're not leaning back 65, 70% of the game. They're getting to take all that weight that they gained in the offseason and put it on people. It doesn't matter yeah. if they're chipping people, if they're, you know, they're locking in and cleaning blocks, getting 300 plus pounds thrown at you. And and this is another this is another stat that I want to highlight too. We ran 67 total offensive plays. Guess how many offensive plays uh uh Ole Miss ran? 65. No, actually, we ran 70, we ran 78, they ran 65. So we flip that dynamic of keeping that defense out there in the yeah, offense. Less than 80 plays, which is, which is insane saying? that we got to ask that. Hey, getting first downs will do that. That's what I'm saying. And you know that, why? Mm-hmm. You know what builds that is just allowing those guys instead of that. You know how, how hard it is to carry 300 and some pounds? I don't care how tall you are. 300 pounds is a lot to carry. But when you build and you condition for football, you don't want to be sitting and holding that up. You don't even do that in the weight room. Everything is about explosion. How do you get explosion? You want to push forward. You want to use momentum. And that's what those big guys did this game. Um, let's jump into the defensive side, guys. Uh, I, I don't have no complaints about our defense, honestly. No. I saw every every level we complained about, about the defensive pressure, the defensive front. Highlight Tim Keenan, y'all. You remember we thought we we thought we thought he couldn't be in on pass rush? Check every key rollout. Talk about it, Jay. Talk about it. No, he, he, was, he was the best. He was the best interior uh, pass rusher by – Far. And that's something that we've been missing for a while is that key interior pass rush. Now, Tim Smith did a great job. I think Tim Smith had two sacks or he had one and a half sacks. So he yeah. was able to get there. But the but the person who was causing that disruption to create those opportunities was Tim Keenan, which that's something that we we've, we've been missing. Like we've been missing that one guy that can just create havoc and create those one on one opportunities for a lot of those for a lot of our other guys to make plays. You know, you know, Jaheim Otis, we all know he can be that guy. Uh, but Tim Keenan was that dude that was literally constantly being a disruptor. And we got to give him a lot of credit because obviously when the run game happened, when Tim Keenan, when he was his turn to rotate and get inside there, boom, it was it was insane. And But his snap count increased. You can tell that Nick Saban and, and, and Kevin still had the confidence within him. I think that for the most part, I think he's going to play a prominent role in this defense, not just being that quick rotational guy. I think his snap count is going to go up extremely high. And uh, no, we got to we got to give him a lot of credit. He was the best interior defensive lineman out there. Um, and it, it, again, it wasn't. I mean, again, you know, you had him, you had Tim Smith. Um, you are. We're going to talk about our edge rushers in a second with their outside linebackers. How mm-hmm. how pivotal they played. Well, Chris Braswell was a monster all night, all night, uh, or all day. I'm sorry, all day. Uh, Dallas uh, Dallas Turner course both showed out in the second. Yeah, but I mean, both of them. But Chris Braswell, in my opinion, I mean, he was from from the first from, snap to yes, the last. Sir. He was a he was a he was causing havoc. Could have had five sacks, but you know couldn't get home on some of those uh, on some of those key snaps. But um, uh, yeah, overall wise, the I was really impressed with that defensive line. And, and again, if Alabama wants to win the West, compete for a national championship, that unit has got to be key and, and, and got to be pivotal. Because you know, like Coach Sean said earlier, Texas is the best team right now in the country. And the reason why, and the reason why we just, you know, one of the biggest reasons why we lost, and it wasn't the defense's fault, but that interior defensive line and our edge rushers couldn't even touch Quinn. Right. That can't happen against teams like LSU and teams like Georgia, against teams that have better offenses and that get better skill position players that can stretch the, that can stretch the field and and it can obviously just be a, a mismatch when you know you know if we play in some zone or if we or if they try to get those one on one opportunities. So again, incredible upside, but we just got to be continue to be more consistent. But Tim Keenan, I I would expect that his snap count to 
definitely increase and play a big role in this defensive line. I see. A, I saw a comment a minute ago. I want to address it real quick. Oh, here you go. Ephraim, some of those third and long, Coach Smoot got to get off the field. I can agree, but at the same time, let me throw some numbers at you. I did numbers this week, y'all. I just want y'all to know. So I, I really I really broke all these games down. We have four games. I told you that's when I would be able to really get a good um, viewpoint or a good take on what this team possibly could bring and basically can judge how far we can go. Third, wait a minute. Um, third, go ahead. No, I was going to say on third down, we're, wait a minute. We They went three for 14 on third down conversions. Okay. That's why I was, um, let me throw the numbers. This is what I want to. Third and fourth, third and fourth down conversions together. We're talking about conversions where they actually got a first down. They were six and twenty combined for third and fourth, fourth down. They went for fourth down six times, right? They and I think they were only two. Of, uh, they were two of six on fourth down, and, and two the of one, them were on one drive, and then they went for it on fourth down again. And they didn't get it, and they, they didn't get it over to no points. Yeah. So, so it was two of six. Um, the one where they got this the the wheel route on Marshall that was just. Marshall, you could tell he knew he made a misstep. When he checked off to the to the running back, he shouldn't have been trying to close that gap. He should have kept the flat angle, and then he would have been able to break up field and been more even because he didn't get burnt. It wasn't like the they barely got the first down on that. So he was in position just the one misstep. But this defense and the amount, so to say that they got to get off, they they were. They were getting off. If, if, if this wasn't Lane Kiffin, a lot of those third down, the fourth downs, the six that they went for are punts. You got to think about it. And then the fourth down conversions that they got were literally like inches missed. One was one was wide open, but the, the last one against uh, Treads Marshall um, on the swing route, on the wheel route out of the backfield was not a bad defensive call. It was literally a, a game of a, a, a play of inches. So we talk about this defense and how they were able to shut it down. The, the, def- the defensive front and his pressure, Coach Sean, Talk about the edge rushes, and, and we'll 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 swing it back around to you, Coach Jay, after Coach Sean talk. But how how did the talk about the linebacker group? Because I don't want to try to dictate what you're talking about. Because you brought up the point about that whole how how the whole linebacker group went. But talk about how their play affected the Ole Miss offense. I think our linebacker play as a whole is really, to me, what really set the tone for that type of offense. Because Lane liked to run a lot of perimeter stuff, man. A lot of misdirection, a lot of window dressing. But our linebackers was foot to foot with those guys on all the perimeter runs. I was really proud of Dallas Turner. I had been hard on him because he wasn't showing me a lot. Dallas, it, it didn't seem like Dallas Turner was having the first game or two, maybe, maybe after the Texas games when he started to turn it up. But I was disappointed because it's almost like he wasn't playing aggressive enough. So almost like he was sleepwalking. Like I, I would lose him on plays. I couldn't even tell he was on the field mm-hmm. at times. But for him to dominate like that and to dominate his opponent and to whip his man in front of him like that, that's what I expect out of him every week. If he wants to be a first-round player, he has to be that force. He has to be someone that the defense has to account for in, when, when they're practicing. You know, Because they yeah. have to account for Will, whether Will had a bad game or a good game. You better believe every defense – had to account for that guy. So I yeah. was very, very, very proud and very, very satisfied with how the off, off, outside linebackers played as well as the middle linebackers, even more so with the middle guys. I know those guys can pass rush. Um, for me, though, one more point on Tim Keenan. I think I see now why they end up moving uh, the to the end. outside. Now. Oh, mm-hmm. can, I I, can, I, can I interrupt you one second? Because he, he – t- it seems they both have run stopping abilities, but Tim may be a better pass rusher. And Maybe. and that, but you but you know what that that provides. The, and and I'm glad you brought it up because I remember that was a complaint of ours. We didn't feel like that that he had enough juice to force a guy. Yeah, you can cause yeah. havoc in the middle. You know, demand a double team to be held up. But he showed his finesse ability. I saw a lot of technique being applied this game, and. When you have a guy that can be like that, and then a guy like James Smith or Perry can come behind him, or uh, um, what's my guy, Tim Smith, when those guys can line up next to Otis, I think you give Otis more ability to seal edge, and that's what really opened up. If you look at Dallas Turner, he had a lot of one-on-one wins against their best offensive linemen, quote-unquote, their left tackle. All his one-on-one wins, majority of them were when he line, got the – and I honestly believe that the, he took that challenge and 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 asked for it. 
Let me get the, their best. Let me get that best side. If their left side is their best side, that's what I want. He defended the run strong on the left side at, at outside linebacker position, and he was able to provide pressure, uh, uh, consistent pressure. Inside linebacker play. Let's talk about Kendra Blackshire, um, Jihad Campbell, and Trez Marshall stepping up for Deontay Lawson when, when Deontay Lawson get out. Honestly, people were worried about a drop-off. I thought more Please efficiency. Didn't skip a beat. Fact. Didn't skip a beat. I, I saw. Fact. I saw. I honestly saw more efficiency. Like I saw better coverage across the middle. I saw better communication when uh, Arnold passed off a route to. I mean, Malachi Moore passed off a route to Campbell. They were calling pre snap. They were literally the the amount of communication and the the efficiency of it pre snap on defense was just something I have I haven't seen in, in the Alabama defense. Last time I saw it was Kansas State game last season to end the season. When them boys was locked in and they were just, they looked like an Alabama defense. So to see that two games in a row now, because the defense was solid last week too. They only gave up three points. And that was a position that special teams put us in. So, uh, I mean, linebacker play, Coach Jay, we were still talking about the linebackers, man. Like, if I had to pick an MVP for this game, though, and I know Braswell had the sacks, I know Turner had his game, but, but Campbell, to be thrown into that moment, and not Terry have Young. a drop off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, now, now we're gonna talk about the secondary. You know, I, we gotta. Y'all want to jump to the second? Let's go to the secondary because I know he want to talk about the secondary too. Coach Jay, talk about the secondary. I'm, I'm. Let's talk about the secondary, and we're gonna talk about our key guys and highlight whatever. Coach Jay, you know what? do what you do, man. You know what? I, that's a, a big reason why I think Campbell had a big game was because of the secondary, how they were able Fair. to step up. It and it, it, this has been it's been consistent oh, every single game this is the we might just have the best run defending secondary in the country Moore. when it comes when it comes when it comes to edge Malachi, con- yeah when, when, when it comes to edge containment when it comes to sealing off when it comes to really allowing other players to uh uh when, when, when it comes to forcing them to to not go outside uh, uh outside the, the corners turn, them cor- corners turning them inside yes sir i yep, know what you're talking about turning right yep right inside and then allowing the and, 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 and this goes hand to hand with our with our inside linebackers the athleticism Mm. That was the difference from last year was the athleticism. We all know Deontay Lawson's a baller, but you can make an argument Deontay Lawson is the least athletic player from that inside linebacker group. You can make a strong case. He might just be the least athletic one. And then you had Henry T, which hey. is a which we know it, it is it is what it is. But when you have players that can tackle in open space, when you have players it. that can run sideline to sideline and just and 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 the and it just a just a snap. It's it's amazing to me, and, and a big reason why is because of our secondary and just oh, you see that comment? Yep, that is oh, yeah. the major difference I was seeing a Texas game when we when even when Caleb Downs got beat on that play, we were not playing soft coverage on that play. That is why my boy got beat. That is why he got beat. You look at the coverage and how he had to he had to make that read. That was a hard read he had to make. The he got drugged down. He had to make it. You can't give up an open crosser. And Caleb Downs was just stuck in kind of an old man's land, even though a, a more experienced player like he, we saw the adjustments. He made the adjustments this game. Eric Thomas, shout out to Eric Thomas. $10 got a word from my guy on the sideline that Saban let Reese have it on that goal line play. That old Saban showed himself. Roll tight. Hey, you didn't have to get word, Eric. We saw it. We saw it. Everybody knows the conversation. Everybody knows when Coach Saban is directing the conversation to that coach or to a play call because he won't be looking at the sidelines. He's in that headset. And I believe, honestly, honestly, that's why them boys in the booth. He can't break them spirits too early. We got to give him a chance, man. That's what the A, hey, to give him a chance. Coach J, but. You think, say, you think Six Saban needs a break, man? Because he's about to be 72, man. Huh? You think he, you think he just needs a break? Well, he's like, you know what? I can't. I I know what I'm about to do, and I I can't get the blood pressure out up. Let's just keep the ass in the booth. Yep, yep. And that might be what it is, man. It might be what it is. And, and, and we were talking about it secondary guys. Arnold. So far to this point in this season, Arnold's our best corner. By I don't far. care what y'all say. By far. By far. Uh, the smart. He he's been, and both of them are playing smart. Not saying Kool Aid's been slack or anything, but mm-hmm. just talking about guys being in phase when they're getting tested. Arnold, I think Arnold has more tar- passes targeted towards him, which is understandable. And when the passes are targeted towards him, his pass breakup rate is higher than Kool Aid's right now. So I'm loving Arnold. Talk about him, Coach Sean. I 
That's your boy. I don't want to go so far as say he's our, our best corner. I don't want to say that just yet. What I will say though is to I think point, he's that's playing, what I, said. I think he's playing better than Kool Aid. Kool Aid hadn't played bad by any stretch mm-hmm. of the imagination. I think right now I think Terry Young is getting more action. I think mm-hmm. teams are trying him, but I'm gonna tell you what I saw. I seen Ole Miss come off of trying three. Lane said something about that in his press conference. We want to try three, go at number three, but he made a great play. They came off of going at three and start going at one, you know, mm-hmm. a few times, you know what I mean? And they completed a few passes here and there against, against Kool-Aid, you know, a little short stuff here and there. Terry on to me is, a, is more physical though. He's more yeah. physical. You know, he, Terry on, Terry on ain't scared to come up and lower the boom on you, man. You know what I mean? Yep. I think the more Terry on plays the position, and it's amazing because this kid did not play corner in high school. Not a lot. Not it's his consistent. second year. No, it's his second year. So it, 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 that, that's amazing to me to see this kid's progression. I, I just think we have two very good corners right now. You know, very, very good corners. Um, I actually thought that in the Texas game, I know he had some bad calls in the Texas game, but what I was watching as a coach is the coverage was there. Mm-hmm. The coverage was always there. He wasn't just get bl- getting blown by like we have in the past. So that it, that will pay big dividends in the future for us. We start playing these other teams, and I like the fact that our our corners are, will come up and lower the boom on you, Malachi. Yes, against teams like LSU, that'll really, really, really help us. Unlike yes. the past. Yes, and I know Trey Amos hasn't been getting a lot of highlight plays coming out there as that third corner, but he's solid in run support. That's one thing I love to see about corners since the transfer portal has been huge, you know, in college football. Um, we, we've yet to bring in a physical corner. Um, Kyrie Jackson, Eli Ricks, both of those guys were supposed to be cover guys. And Eli Ricks was a cover guy. He wasn't physical, though. You saw every time he had to go and be physical, he was throwing a shoulder or dropping his head, trying to make tackles. We got guys wrapping up, driving through tackles. Malachi Moore, Caleb Downs. Them the two safeties. Those are, those are Bama safeties. We haven't had Bama safeties like that in a while. Jalen Key, he's he giving me Eddie Jackson flashbacks. You know, like, the kid has range. One thing I do want to see from Key, though, he does put himself in a lot of bad positions trying to bait a lot of stuff. And he got to remember he's in the SEC. And Mississippi State got some burners coming out of that slot. He needs to play honest, just like Caleb Downs did this this game. And yeah. Griffin, if, if, we, if, if, if we get that honest play from them, because they have the reaction skills. They have the awareness. We get that honest play from them. We don't see a lot of those middle, wide open middle passes. You know, we don't see a lot of those little, these deep drags getting passed off too late or not getting passed off early enough. You know, um, we don't see a lot of that. So minor things from our defense as far as seeing improvement. Um, but at the top of the at the top of the chain, we're talking about the person calling the defense. Let's talk about Kevin Steele, man. Like before you move on to that, let me say one ahead. last thing. This team we're about to play, while they're not as diverse as Ole Miss on offense, while their playbook don't look nothing like Ole Miss, they don't try to fool you a lot, this team will be, I think, more aggressive at the point of attack with they their will. running game. They will because they won't, they won't, they don't want to waste time east and west. Exactly. They're 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 mm-hmm. they're, they're going to live and die by their vertical game. Yeah. And, and that's vertical. People they get confused vertical game with just passing. No, we're talking about vertical run game too. There's there's yeah, north and south. They, exactly. Yeah. So to me, the way our defense played, that plays in our favor. Hopefully we they do stick with that concept yeah. because that, that plays in our favor. So um we definitely got to be prepared for that physicality at the point of attack. Yeah, um, don't feel good this game. That's I mean, and that's for the defense, that rounds it up for man. You, to, to transition into this, Coach Jay, you got anything to say before we transition into the Mississippi State game? No, I'm just I, I'm just excited about the speed. You know, that's right. that's the that's the that's the one key thing um, that I'm just I, I've been happy about since day one is we are we are fast. You know, that's one yes. thing that you can make an argument that we just haven't had over the last couple of years was that we were just lacking a little bit of speed. We were lacking guys that were willing to hit and willing to be aggressive. You know, I think that we were afraid. I think that for the most part, because we've been under Pete Golden, and thank God for Pete Golden uh, on Saturday with <laughs> yes. the defense. Um, but otherwise, for the most part, we were way too conservative. We were way too much complex, and we didn't let these guys play. Um, the, Kevin still has been extremely simplistic with his defense. Um, I We were probably the most aggressive that I think we've seen this week, and I think that's how we need to play. That's how we need mm-hmm. to play because – the the strength and the aggression of this defense it, it plays into this team's strength, which is their speed and their athleticism and their and their willingness to be physical. Right, and I think that that is the total difference. 
something to think about as we transition to this Mississippi State game. And this is a, a question, not a question, but a thought for the fans to keep on their mind. If Deontay Lawson doesn't go, we saw the three-man rotation at uh, the inside linebacker spot, which was really a four-man rotation before Lawson went down. Do we get a chance to see Justin Jefferson on the field finally? Probably going to have to now. As and, far and, as, why why, why yeah. not? And, and yeah. Justin Jefferson, we think about Justin Jefferson on the field, but let's talk about these special team plays, how key they were in this game. Ja'Cory Brooks, Justin Jefferson, even Jam Miller's ill-advised hit, but the energy that it brought. You know, I I, will, I would love for you to keep your head up on that one, Jam. That scared me. Even it was a big play, and I didn't say, oh, everybody, oh, and because it was sounded hard. I'm saying, oh, because I thought of, you know, the, the action, yes, the action mm-hmm. on the neck. And we've seen that. So um, those, really those special teams plays, man, yeah, you know, he was hurting on the mm-hmm. sideline. And then yeah, yeah funny moment. <laughs> funny moment, man. Verdell, I don't know if y'all read his lips. Verdell said, damn, bro, see you next game. <laughs> As he was getting that, so it was a funny thing. And to see that energy on the sideline, man, on each phase of the game, special teams, offense, defense, it was awesome. Transitioning to the Mississippi State game. This game coming in, this Mississippi State team is is coming off of two tough losses. One against LSU and the other one against, um, who was it, South Carolina, South Carolina. I believe. I watched that game in depth over, you know, back and forth and saw a lot of stuff, man. Yeah, and you know. and it and, and before we even get into that, Sean, and before I even throw my statement out there, um, watching that film, those two games from Mississippi State, and and looking at how we played our last two games, I'm not going to say that. I say we we do have a lot of positives, more positives going into this conference road game, more positive to build on than we do negatives. Mississippi State, Alabama. Talk about it, Coach Jay. What key matchups are you looking for overall? I'm, I'm going to give you the freedom to talk about it. Any any matchup you're looking for that you feel like is going to be a key matchup in order for Alabama to win this game? No, I think I think for the most part, I think I think our defensive line against their offensive line. I think what we said before, they're going to be a vertical team. They're going to it's going to be north and south. You know, they have an offensive coordinator that came from Appalachian State, who was one of the best run game coordinators in the country. He was top twenty five nationally when it comes to run. Uh, when it comes to run the, the pass ratio, um, he's a guy that that relies on physicality, but he also relies a little bit on tempo. But for the most part, he's not he's not going to do anything too cute like Mike Leach did with Mississippi State, right? With that air raid offense, and they run constant five wide, and they're running a bunch of short intermediate pra- uh, passes and sh- you know, and some shallow crosses here and there. That's that's not what's going to happen with them. Um, Mississippi State, I, I do think they got some skill position players that I think matchup wise is going to be fun to see. Griffin from South Carolina went off last week, uh, uh set seven receptions for 256 yards. He's a guy that you can line up, up out, out wide, you can line him up in the slot. He's a little bit more of that gadget player for Mississippi State. You can line him up pretty much anywhere, but that's going to be a key player to kind of look up for because that, that kid's dangerous. That kid is very dangerous, and it'll be interesting to see what he can do against Amos, uh, line him up in the slot. and. And uh, again, against our speed, I think matchup wise, I think we can we match up really well because, I, again, like I keep implementing our, our athleticism, our speed, I think can match up really well what their offense does. Um, and just like I missed how, just how their coach was kind of talking about that. They got to take advantage of matchups and they got to be extremely efficient. You cannot slack off against this defense. Uh, but the, what's always going to be key for us is instilling pressure. Because no matter what they do, no matter how good skill position players you have, if you can get home to the quarterback, you're not doing nothing. If you can get, if you, right. can, if you, can, if you can cause havoc and penetration and disruption in the interior, you're not going to run the football. You're not going to do what you want to do to set up those pass plays. So Correct. this is a team that they're going to they're going they're going to challenge Bama, right? right. You no, know, they're not going to run. They're not they're not going to be doing a lot of uh, cute things, right? They're not going to be running a lot of end rounds and they're not going to be running a lot of motion. But they're they're going to be physical. They're they're going to try to challenge Bama and impose that will against them and try to wear them down so i'm excited for this matchup i think i think out of all the games right now this is the matchup where i think this defense does match up really well but mississippi state they're not afraid man you know i would say with the exception of losing to i think didn't they play lsu with the they got blown up by lsu i believe right yeah well, lsu handled them like yeah they handled with, with them. that except yeah with that exception they have pretty much been they, they, every game has been close right they lost south carolina close arizona who's three and one <laughs> in, in a really really good pac-12 school they won that game 
pretty close because of how they were able to handle that game and how they were able to kind of dominate in the trenches. So I, I, I like this Mississippi State football team. I think that this is the team that can, that can provide some challenges. But matchup-wise, this, this, this is a, a phenomenal matchup for Bama. Right. Um, something you said about uh, uh, Mississippi State's interior. I, they, they, that's, a, that's a weakness I've seen from them. For them to want to rely on the, the run game so much, um, that's a weakness that I've seen from them on a consistent basis. And you remember week mm-hmm. three, we were talking about how Caden Proctor is consistently getting beat in those extended pass protection plays. You know, or, you know, late late in the game, especially, but early in the game, we saw his struggles. But then, um, I think with Mississippi State, uh, Mississippi State, I think they're still trying to figure out their their play calling balance. They 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 don't seem to be comfortable, um, in their play calling balance, and that's something that after a defensive performance from our, um, from our defense, especially on the defensive front, the D line. I think that's something that's going to be able to help us momentum-wise carrying into this Mississippi State game. Coach Sean, key matchup that you want to highlight going into this Mississippi State game? For me, um, the young man who calls their offensive plays, I think his last name is Barbie, Kevin Barbie. Yeah, from Appalachian. Long, yeah. So, you know, dude is a pro-style guy, very, very physical guy. But I watched that game against South Carolina, and what I noticed was Mississippi State, they're not very uh, prolific on offense, man. They're very methodical as far as they'll take three yards in the cloud of dust, but they will go over top. They will try to go over top with you. I noticed one mm-hmm. play where South Carolina was in a very similar formation that we run, and uh, one of their defensive linemen was playing a zero technique, and mm-hmm. uh, um, Mississippi State had two tights on one side, like a, what we call a, a overload or overhang tight end. Yeah. And what I noticed was the defensive end, which we call a four eye, you know what I mean? Defensive end, the guy was supposed to play inside out between the tackle and the tight end. He played what between the two tight he ends. Got extended, and Mississippi State ran an inside zone, zone yep. back to the weak side, yep. back to the other side where the personnel was short at. And they popped one, you know. So, but that wasn't, that's nothing that's, that's out of the ordinary, right? Right. Overload one side, run inside zone, back to the weak side, uh, pull a guard or pull something through there. Very, very physical type run. You know, don't be mm-hmm. fooled because it's an inside zone. Very physical type run. So what I noticed is these guys will try to pound on you. It's kind of like what Coach Jay just said. These guys are not trying to fool you. They're not trying to fool you. They're coming downhill. I think, and like into your credit too, Coach Smoke, I think that does bode well for us. Yes. Um, I do like their quarterback, though, man. That quarterback is one of those guys when he's cold, he's cold. But when yes. he's hot, he's, he's hot. hot. He will try up top with the Griffin with the Griffin kid. And they had another kid. I think it was uh, Xavier Thomas, I think his name was. Yeah, yeah Thomas. He, he possession yeah. receiver, yeah. 6'4", 220, yeah. big body guy type guy. Yes, yes. Those guys will try to go downfield on you if they feel like they can lull you to sleep with the run. So the matchup I want to see is I want to see their receivers against our secondary. I know our defensive front seven is going to handle their business with this team. I want to see the way our offense handles their defense, how their defense handles our offense, I guess I should say. Um, these guys are physical. It's kind of like what Coach Jay said. They're not going to be afraid. They're physical. They will bring pressure. They will bring it from different points. Um, they're going to test our defensive front. But what I like about it is, the more physical the game, the more I really don't worry. I worry about the finesse team finesse. who can bring yep. pressure and have the athletes on the outside. The big body physical guys, I think that bodes well for us. Um, mm-hmm. The guys who kind of give me great concern is the guys who are flexible and can bend and can come get our quarterback. And I don't think this team has a lot of those guys, but I'm really, really anxious to see how we play on the road. Me too, man. And, and I want I want y'all to uh, the, these receivers. And I'm looking at them. Uh, Griffin, even though he's explosive, he's not a, a a a big target from them. You get what I'm saying? He's he's their explosive guy. So I don't see them being able to. I don't see him being enough of a threat for us to commit to game plan. I think this team allows us to be even game plan as far as keeping guys eyes leveled. Um, and when I say that, I mean not pulling guys from the grand scheme of things because they have a special assignment. And there's a lot of times we had to do that last year with Pete Golden well over the past years because he just refused to just simplify things and scheme to the look. A lot of times the look is what you're going to get. Even with Lane Kiffin, 
pre-snap movement, you're still going to get the same look. It's just giving you the pre-snap movement to get you away from that that natural look. So the moment we get guys, and I think that's what's happened with Kevin Steele and his defensive staff, um, especially with T-Rob in the secondary, those guys are buying into simplicity of the play call. Making it simple, in, 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 out, out, out. I can't tell you how many times I saw that communicated during the play against uh, Ole Miss with some of the crosses they was running and everything. I heard it. I could see guys in, 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 out, 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 linebackers, out, out, out. You know, go on, go on, go on. I could hear it. You could hear it one time when uh, when uh, Campbell, uh, the, the route got behind Campbell and the, the receiver dropped it, but he was late on the transition and they dapped each other up. That's on me. So it's, it's those small things that I see us taking advantage of with this Mississippi State offense not really clicking, but like you said, Sean, Will Rogers is a guy. He will put his hat in there on the run. Yeah. He he will take the risky throw that you're not expecting him to throw. And, and you got guys like Griffin and Thomas who will come down with it. It's another guy that's sneaky. Um, Whaley, Wally, Jaden Whaley. He's a sneaky guy too. Um, one thing that does play in our favor, these guys aren't huge receivers. And we've been handling the the five nine to five eleven guys, six foot guys, real solid. It's been the big guys that's been kind of giving us a few issues here and there in the past. So um, I think we step up this game offensively. Let's jump on the offensive side and what our offense must do to be successful against Ole Miss. Um, if I could start off quarterback position, I think we just go with him. Let Miro do Miro again. You know, put him in positions where. Early on, you're not putting too much on his on his brain, but you're allowing him to play football. Um, and a lot of offensive line to lean early. That's I mean, that's simple for me. I think all wide right receivers have the advantage. They do have a decent secondary. They have some experienced guys. But I think our receiving core and tight ends have the advantage. Uh, running backs, I, I, I like our running backs against any defense when our offensive line is clicking. Um, and that means like 85% clicking, 75% clicking. We could, we, our running backs could still make plays. Um, so offensively, the sooner and the, the quicker we can get Milro comfortable on the road, that's how our offense goes and how that O-line goes. Coach Sean, back to you, man. Uh, how the offense how do we how do we see success in this game against Mississippi State in that defense? I think this team will be able to use some of Lane Kiffin's own home cooking against this team. I think we can attack the perimeter against these guys. They thick in the middle now. They thick you know, in, in the trenches, they thick and physical in there. And I think it's typical Mississippi State. Right. They always sort of physical on the, on the offensive and defensive lines, man. Same same uh, recipe. These guys are real physical on the defensive line. But I've seen teams run on them. I've mm-hmm. seen teams run on them, man. I think we'll be able to run the ball on them. But I would like to see us at least try to get to the perimeter on this team. I think our speed can work for us in this game. Um, I, I think Tommy Reese will try to. At least try to attack these guys on the outside for a minute to see if we can pop something out there. Um, I think we'll have our opportunities in the pass game because it's like you said, they're aggressive in the secondary. So yeah. it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. Uh Mississippi State is always physical. They pride themselves on being physical, if nothing else. Um, but I do believe our offense will have opportunities based off how they play defense. Uh, the young man who's their head coach right now was their defensive coordinator last year. So the defense hadn't really changed very much, but they are very, very aggressive in the secondary. They'll play man. They'll try to mug you to death. Their corners are not afraid. They got some good corners, too. They got some good corners, man. So we'll have our opportunities in this game. It's going to be interesting to see what Reese cooks up. Yeah, and I, I, I wanted to highlight that because uh, of a lot of people talk about how the game played out last year. They run it a lot. They disguise a lot of their three high safety. Yeah. Um, kind of like Arkansas does, yeah. but that's re- that's really a corner out there. They just play him soft on. If you give them a three split or you you split your tight end, they're going to play him soft. That's just something they live and die by because they're trusting their guys to play the ball in the air, play off the release, and that's why they get beat a lot. Because a team like us and how we want to play, if we can be effective in the run game, that corner is going to continue to that that third corner slash safety is going to continue to have to cheat up when you're popping six, seven yards of a, a run, you know, average of six yards of carry, which we, we can expect. And um, that off-tackle run is definitely going to be solid. I think the counter game is going to be imp- imposed this game. I think we're going to see more real options with Jalen and, and those guys. Uh, Coach Sean, I mean, Coach Jay, offensive keys to success this week. Coach Jay, before you answer that question, 10 seconds. Yes, sir. Randy mm-hmm. Blair, 
That's a great point. Miro has got to handle the cowbell crowd noise. I've never understood why they allow these guys to ring cowbells while the other teams. I just have never understood that in 2023, you know. But go ahead, Coach Jay. Hey, hey, you said it, but now, that's I, a good point. I, I, I don't think that. I don't think if anybody's bothered by the cowbells, I think see, it's it's more so Saban. That's one thing yeah. Saban complains about every since he I mean, even when he was at LSU. I think he's more, but Miro, I don't, I don't see that. As far as getting the calls out, this, this offense is not going to be complex early on. I guarantee you, Tommy Reese, Nick's. I don't think Nick Saban's going to allow Tommy Reese to make it complex because we have the ability to be physically imposing. Coach Jay, yeah. No, I agree. I, I, I the cowboy, the, the cowboys, the cowbells. Um, it's, it's, yeah, that, that could be a factor, you know, and, and not, not from Miro, I think from McLaughlin, you know, I think, Man. I think it's, yes. I think it's, Man. if he reverts back to what he played in that first half with, with low snaps, high snaps, snaps to the right, snaps to the left, that could potentially be an issue for us. Um, but no, I, I think that for the most part, I actually, you know, again, you, this is a team where you can run the outside of, but I, I would not mind it at all if they start to run a lot more inside, start to run more power runs inside zones, start to really challenge and test out this defensive line a little bit because this is a good test. I think this is a kind of more of a good test from this. Is, again, these guys are big. These guys are physical. Uh, Nathan Pickram is kind of one of the more underrated defensive uh, interior uh, interior line in the country is a very very quick explosive type uh tier this interior defensive line who can cause disruption and i think bam i, I ain't gonna lie me as a fan we got a bone to pick because he ended to a talk of a lowest career um but that's just me um but no I, I think that for the most part they got some guys um um, um i think his name I, I forgot his last name but his name was Jalen. he's a 305 pound guy very very big also can cause disruption yeah. and they, they can get to the quarterback Right. Yeah. You know, we, we can't really underestimate their ability. These guys can get to the quarterback. So um, they got some they got a deep, you know, not a deep rotation, but they got a solid rotation. They got they got the athletes. It's Mississippi. So, you know, they got the guys they got the, the guys out there to, to, to challenge Alabama's front. But no, I, besides that, I think they're edge rushers. I don't think they've had the same death they've had since since 2019, since that 2018 uh, 2019 type season. I don't think they got that same depth when they had sweat and the rest of those guys as far as their edge rotation. It's, it's kind of hard to kind of replicate that success. I think they're secondary wise. They got they got some nice rangy corners, right? That yeah. Emmanuel Forbes type player where you got to, you know, again, they're not the biggest guys out there, but they got six one, six two guys that have very, very long arm, very, very long rangy type dudes. Um, so, I, you know, overall wise, they got personnel, right? It's the SEC. You're going to have personnel in this conference. But this is a game where you you got to keep it simplistic, right? Let Jalen Miro do what he does. Um, give him the quarterback design runs, right? Give him give you know, right. Give him uh, the the freedom to run this offense at will. Um, let's try to be more physical than posing. Let's try to get mm-hmm. Jalen Miro back in his comfort zone. Um, and you know, but this but for the most part, you know, if th- if this is a team that if you do want to run a majority of your run plays on the outside, you can. I just want to stick it a little bit more to the inside continue to get this offensive line the confidence that it deserves and that we honestly still need to continue to build off of because we don't want to go revert back to the first half. We want to try to to keep things a lot more simple. And then I would definitely say this, let's start to run a little bit more plays under center. You know, I've always said this about Jalen Miro. He can, he can, he can take the snaps under center, you know, on that goal line situation where we're, where we're running out of the shotgun. Like why we're at the two. Let's try to get right. under center. Let's try that to get the crazy. push. We got 330 pound linemen. Let's that try to get crazy. that 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 Eagles push, that Hurts push right back in there, you know? So, let's yeah. try to run a little bit under center. Let's go right. Let's go. Let's try to go back to that old tradition, that old type style, impose our will in the power run game and uh build confidence. Build confidence over on this line cuz if you can dominate this interior defensive line, they're not the greatest defensive line in the world, but they got the size that can that can cause problems for Bama. I think that builds more confidence going into future SEC games. Yeah. And I see a comment. Uh, Derek Austin said, um, "What happened to the slant routes? I want you to go back and watch the game. A lot of a lot of the plays where Jalen was hitting the hitch at the sticks, it was because the slant from the inside receiver was, you know, running. And a lot of times, um, a lot of us people who know football, this new age of football and the style of offense, slant routes aren't three yards and in anymore. You know, it's not a no. post route for my offense, my receivers until we hit the eight to twelve range. You yeah. know, and that's that's our inside break." Um, I teach slant is 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 depth below the sticks. You know that's what we when we say get your slant, uh, read the ceiling. Your your ceiling is the sticks. So um, when you got your um your nickel corner or your safety playing eight nine yards off of a guy and his right is the slant, 
you're going to get a four or five yard slant. He, he has to. You see that in the NFL too, Smoot. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's all, and that's. But you know, one thing about last year's offense compared to this year's offense is they're not being told to read if that's a slant. They're being told to run a slant, and your depth is based off the alignment of that guy in front of you. Right. Don't go out there and, and pick a route based off of his alignment. Run a slant based off of his alignment. And that they, is they, the they main thing. They ran on Levi Wallace last night like three times in a row. Facts. And and it happens, man. And it, and, and when guys are on the same page with that, that takes away a whole layer of thinking that receivers, quarterbacks, and O-line have to do. And, and you are able to play a little bit faster, and that's what we're seeing. So I'm loving it, man. I'm loving the way this team is being effective um, in the run game. Um Another key thing that I do want to talk about before we start to break it down, guys, coaching schematically. Do we see another, and I say, and I'm asking this, and this is involving our our offense. I'm asking this because I don't want to believe that that play calling from Tommy Reese, if we look at the play calling from Tommy Reese, he called a good game. Both halves, he called a good game. Um, Miro got in a few third downs where he should have let the ball go or he could have just took off. Um, the early sack, he should have stepped up. Um, you know, it, it, it was something that he worked on. You saw the changes in the second half. That's why he was able to step up and make the pass to Hill in the second half. I think but we tried he, to throw the ball too much in the first half. I don't think we should. And I think I think this game, even if they, if they stack the box, we still got to give our interior offensive line guys to set the tone once again. And that's yeah. from Booker to Dalcourt. You know, those yeah. three guys in there, they're, they're the key to this run game getting started because a lot of those double teams, second level blocks were happening with Dalcourt and McLaughlin, uh, Booker and McLaughlin, Booker pulling, uh, pulling to the right. Uh, Dalcourt, guys, Dalcourt played a, a beautiful second half and it looked like Dalcourt from his freshman year when he had to come in the Iron Bowl. Um, if we could get that Dalcourt every week, I don't, I don't mind not seeing Ferguson, but I did like having Ferguson as in that six man rotation last game. Can I address um, this comment? Yeah, go. I was just about to. Uh, I seen Trouble the comment. Man said the pick was concerning. For me, it's not. I totally disagree because that play call to me, I mean, you know, every coach is different. Every coach has their way of running. Every offensive coach I've ever played for didn't like running stuff like high low that close to the goal line. High low was always a middle of the field type formation we like run. One receiver yeah. going on the low route. They run the same route in most high lows, but they one receiver is low, one over the top high. Jalen just got caught up in the wash and threw it to the wrong receiver. You know, yes. he wasn't even open. I don't know what he saw on that. I didn't like the high-low play at that point in time. I think Jace would have scored if we had just stick with the run on that. Um, so, but the but the interception is not really that concerning to me because the entire game, the guy put the ball where it needed to be, where even it needed on to be. times when he held it too long, like me and Coach Jay was saying. The interception he threw in that game. It it's not very that concerning to me, you know. It wasn't like the Texas game where he threw in the in the clearly the wrong coverage. So I don't think so, man. I I, I totally respectfully disagree. I I I, I, mean, I, 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 I agree with you, Sean. I, I I'm one of the ones that say that that was his one off. We don't need to see another pass like that, you know. And yeah, we Co- didn't. We didn't. Go ahead, Coach Jack. Yeah. No, I, I was about to say. I I think that. I'm going to be honest. I think Milrow rushed the progression because I think he was trying to rush. I think he was trying to project if when the pressure was trying to trying to establish yep. a little bit. Yeah, I, I really do think that because if you take a look at it before, Jalen Milrow was standing, you know, he was trying to be in the pocket two, three seconds, trying to go through his progressions, trying to see what, type, you know, if he can if he can try to find those open reads. But he got sacked four times in that first half. Right, right before that, he got sacked four times. So when you have to, when you take a look, when you really kind of take a look at it, when when you take a look at that progression, he's trying to get that ball out as fast as possible. So for that high low concept, I think he's trying to project where the receiver is going to be, uh, yeah. you know, if that ball can be accurate, and you know, again, when is the rush going to get to him? Because he, I think he's afraid that he's going to miss that that potential, you know, that potential read. Again, if he just would have stayed a little bit more patient and 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 get off that first and see that Jermaine Bur- Burton was wide open right underneath. I think yeah. he could have delivered to him, but I'm gonna be honest. I just if you go back and watch that game, uh, people, watch how fast he's trying to get that ball out as soon mm-hmm. as he was sacked, as soon as he just constantly just kept getting hit a little bit later on in that first half. I, I just yeah. I think that that's just something we gotta click. Because in the second half, he went and he went to he went from stop rushing it, he went from taking his time, yep. seeing everything on the field, and then he started to attack it. I think that's he just gotta get better at that. 
Do y'all remember after the Middle Tennessee State game, I said one thing that I was happy to see with Jalen Miro was his helmet was doing this. Mm-hmm. I mean, left and right in, in in extended progression plays, you see you see his head. This game, I don't even on that play. That was probably one of the three plays that game where on the extended pass game where he I didn't see his head moving, and I saw him basically walk that corner and the safety down over to uh to Brooks on that you know that corner. And to your point, Coach Sean, if I'm running high low in that situation, I'm not running a corner. Exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm running. I'm running no, a, yeah. a, a, either a drag with my my outside receiver, and exactly. I'm running a, a deep out on the front of the goal line with my my second. Or if I'm going to run that type of high low, I got to bring something to get that safety to look at other than those two reads on the left. I didn't see a swing route with the running back out to that side to make uh the pull the underneath coverage. Yeah, to give you that pull. This was eating it. They was just like, okay, you know, they was on yeah, the hand, at, like what. And so Fair. when I saw that, I was concerned. But then to go down and see that same high-low concept ran in the middle of the field and yeah. also to see that the tight end was drug across, not chip block first, but right off the line, drug across to yeah. grab the attention of whatever that underneath pre- uh, coverage was. Those are the type of adjustments I've been waiting to see with this offense and the play calling. And it was literally like, guys, those are the answers that we needed in Texas, the small answers we needed in Texas game, those small adjustments. And I'm 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 more than excited. Some numbers I want to throw throw at y'all as we can as we get ready to wind down. When we talk about we we talked about the O line and the D line, right, being a key matchup. Uh, our um, D line versus their O line, being able to get pressure on the quarterback. Um, in each of their games, uh, Mississippi State against Louisiana Monroe, they gave up three sacks against Louisiana Monroe week one. Yes, they handled business, but they gave up three sacks and they had nine QB pressures. Against LSU, four sacks, 13 QB pressures. Against uh, South Carolina, uh, four sacks, 14 QB pressures. So a consistent, there's a, and, and, and I didn't get into, you know, where these pressures were coming from, what type of pressures, four man, five man. But the way Kevin still caught the second half, I don't see anything less than five man pressures coming when we do send that pressure. And it's because of how effective it was. So, I believe that's another key factor we're going to see in this game with our defense and their offense. How much pressure can we get with sending three, four? I know we're going to get pressure with five, but can we rely on four and be that much more locked down in the coverage? That's going to be a key thing. I'm ready. I'm excited to see. Anything else before we wind down, guys, and get into our predictions? Anything you guys want to talk about before we just... Are y'all I'm good, good, man? I'm, ex- yeah, I'm, I'm excited, good. guys. This yeah. is the first time I'm calm going into a game not necessarily calm. I'm, I'm, I'm more anxious and more settled in what to expect from this team because now we've seen their worst. And I think we saw bad in this game. We saw less bad, though. You know, how many total penalties did we end up having that game? I want to say it was like six, six total penalties for less than 50 yards. So and two of them uh, were targeted. So that's 30 of your yards. You know, uh, or one was targeted. One was a personal foul, you know, hit him in the face on the pass which was crap because he was tied up, engaged with a, a offensive lineman, and br- they got Braswell on that. But, um, oh, yeah, and shout out to my boy Will Reichert, man. Will Reichert is the yeah. GOAT, bro. He Ooh, and James Burnham, James Burnham, the, the way he flipped the field um, for that second drive and they had to drive the score, like, that was key. That was key we in may, that game. We may yeah. just have the best they kicking, punting duo in the country. Like, we seriously. Do. We we I, like that. What's the one spot where I just think that we have just been dominated? It's flip. It's flipping the field, and we've been money with our field goals, whether if it's from 30, 40, and fifty. That's the right. one spot. And, and, and I'm telling y'all, and and Ephraim just said it. Um, we plan on the road. This team, I believe, this team right now, the Texas game was probably as much of a test that we're going to get up until we see LSU come in yeah. come into town. And I don't care if on the road or anything, Milro is going to be composed, y'all. It's not him that I'm worried about, like you said, Coach Jay. It's, it's that center. As long as he got good snaps, and I'm saying we we can win, we can blow teams out with 80 percent good snaps. You know, most teams want 100 percent good snaps. We could blow teams out with 80 percent good snaps because Milro is a guy that can create off of bad snaps once he gets a hold on the ball. So if we can just get more efficient in 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 our our uh, execution of the snap. Man, we'll be good. Predictions, guys. Chat, run your predictions up. Score, offensive MVP, 
defensive MVP and X Factor. Coach Jay, you take it away. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say 31, uh, 31, 13 Alabama. I think that this offense uh, starts to really get going. Um, and I and I, I'm not saying that we're now. It, it's a possibility we can get going in the second half. I think the first half. I think we're gonna we're gonna come out firing in off cylinders. Uh, defensively, like I said before, I think that we got the speed and the athletes, and we got the size inside to really match up with what Mississippi State's gonna try to do. Um, so again, I'm not really worried about misdirection or a lot of motion, a lot of screens. I'm not really worried about that from this particular team. That's not Kiffin and that's not their, you know, that's not Sark. That's not their type of play style. Um, so I think that again, matchup wise, we match up extremely well against their football team. They got, again, they got playmakers that can, that, that could potentially cause us some havoc and cause some trouble, but knowing how Kevin still is and knowing how this defense is played and knowing how well we've you know, we've played arguably one of the secondary. Again, you make an argument the secondary is our best unit um, of, of this defense. I just think that that's going to keep us right in the game. That's going to create opportunities. That's going to create um, some potential turnovers um, for our offense to get good field position. And I think that this is going to be the game where we take full advantage of that in the first half. We dominate. Um, could we slow down the second half? We could potentially do it. I'm not going to sit up here and say we're going to score 40 or 50 points yet. I'm going to say 31. I believe we get it slowly but surely going. But this, I think last week was a, was a building block, and I think that now we start to kind of progress throughout the season, and, and hopefully we can get better. Right, right, man. I'm 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 going to go ahead and let Coach Sean go. Uh, prediction? Off- oh, yeah, Coach uh, Jay, uh, we need your start, offensive and, and defensive MVPs. Oh, okay. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, go off- ahead. Offensive MVP? Um, you know, because these guys don't get enough love. I'm gonna give it to Caden Proctor. I think Caden Proctor mm-hmm. is gonna have a great game in the pass game and in the, in the run game. I think that this could be this could be the game where I think he he steps up huge for us, and I think he starts to take that next step in his development. Um, because I because again, we all believe that he could become an All American type of player. I think he's gonna step up really huge for us on that left side, and then defensive MVP. Um. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it to. Oh boy, because I I don't even know if Campbell's gonna. You know, we got to take a look at Lawson's status. Um, oh, it's tough, man. It's tough. I, it's so many, you know, we're, right? <laughs> we're so, so many good players. Um, you know what? I, I'm gonna give it to Malachi Moore. I'll just give it to Malachi Moore. He's been my favorite player so far in the secondary. Um, he's been. I hate. He's been the 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 initiator on that team. He's been. Yes. He's been the. He's been tone that setter. engine to the Ferrari. The tone setter. Like he's been like he's like he has been that player, which has been extremely impressive because I never thought that was his play style from looking at him from his freshman year and then looking at him when he was uh, when he was in high school. So that's hey, I can't wait to see what he what he continue to do in the future, man. But no, he I, I think he's going to have a heck of a game here. All right. Oh, son, take it away. Uh, USMC Marine says, why is our center having issues snapping the ball at times? USMC. In my experience, when a center is snapping the ball like that, it could be a multitude of things. I've seen centers do that when they're getting whipped. I've seen centers do that when they're out of shape. I've seen centers do that when they lose concentration. It could be mm-hmm. injured. I mean, it could be a multitude of things. While He's of a still bad on the injury. Is, you know, Remember multitude the hand surgery. Hand surgery in the offseason. Sur- yeah, it could be a multitude of things, man. Um, Ephraim says, will we see Ty Simpson? I don't know, man. I got us winning by probably 17 points. Um, my, my offensive MVP, I think Jermaine Burton's have a great game this game. Uh, I think Jermaine gonna have a, uh, have a breakout game. I know he's been doing well now, but I think he's gonna have one of those hundred yard games in this game. Uh, my defensive MVP, I really do believe, is probably gonna be one of the outside linebackers, Chris Braswell or Dallas Turner. I think they'll have a multitude of tackles in this game and have an opportunity to rush the quarterback. So I think I'll go with Chris Braswell on defense and Jermaine Burton on offense. I think we win probably by 17 points. I like that, man. I like that. Uh, especially with the Jermaine Burton yeah. offensive MVP. That time. Yeah. But as much as I think Jermaine Burton go off, I see uh, Isaiah Barnes going crazy this game. He's the if- one I want to see them get him some type of – Perimeter they, something. They, you know. Not necessarily perimeter. It's 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 two plays in this in in the last game against Ole Miss where Jalen Miro steps up in the pocket. Isaiah Bonds is streaking that that deep crosser that Waddle and Smitty and Judy and those guys are just known for just you like man how did they get open or well, where they came from? Bonds had a few of those where uh Miro and Miro 
my bad on 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 both of those when he could have stepped up. Um, so I think the more we grow, which if we had to do it against a defense who doesn't like the um who's not getting the pressure like they are, because to this point, um, Mississippi State only has uh uh four total sacks in four games. So uh they have ten. Ten? Yeah, they have oh, 10 sacks. I'm, I'm I'm sorry, that was the last game they had four sacks. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm tripping. So um I mean just just I I would love to see that 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 offensive line continue to grow in that protection for him to step up and see those deep crosses. Uh score. I'm gonna go Alabama um 41. And that's uh a couple Will Riker field goals in the first half on extended drives where they go, you know, four or five minutes. Um ex outside, right outside the red zone, maybe. We, you know, depend on, I don't know what Mississippi State defense shows up, but I do feel like this offense can get going, whether it's early in the second quarter, carried on through out the third quarter, the last drive, third quarter grind, where we just impose our will. Um, So I'm going Alabama 41, Mississippi State. The way this defense has been playing, I can see us holding them under 17. So I'm going to go Alabama 41, Mississippi State 13. And um, offensive MVP, I'm going to give it to, even though I was highlighting my boy Isaiah, I'm going to give it to, I think one of the run back snaps this game. I don't know who, though, because I feel like either one can go out there. Rodell, Jace, I feel like if Jam mess around and get out there and break one, coach might leave him out there. Cause it, oh, that's another thing. I'm sorry, y'all. That's what I wanted to highlight earlier. Y'all remember we was talking about feeding the guy when they hot in the running back room? If you look at the amount of carry, the ratios of carries from Jace and Roydell, Jace came out hot. Roydell didn't play bad. Jace just came out hot, and I, I love that. So, shout out to uh, my boy Duke to go. Go ahead, Sean, hit that. Great content and accurate, accurate analysis, as always. $2 Super Chat, we thank you. Duke to go 2020. Shout out Duke to go. <laughs> shout out Duke to go. <laughs> but, yeah, man, so that – um. Offensive MVP, I'm going to give it to one of the running backs. Let's just go Jace. I feel like he's on a, on a tear. I, I don't know. Offense is doing just as good in that second half. They, they gave me a lot of confidence. Defensively, I think this is the game where we see a couple Caleb Downs picks. Will Rogers is going to try to pick on Caleb Downs over top, try to catch him in some bad positions. And Caleb Downs almost had his first career interception if Terry Arnold had it took it from him. He would have had a dive and interception because that ball was definitely thrown short against Ole Miss and his dive, he, he would have had a good chance of getting it. Um, I think Caleb Downs shows up this game. Malachi Moore is going to allow him to be successful because of how efficient he is going to be playing underneath on that nickel look when he's walking down. So I think Caleb Downs gets to show up. He's going to be put in a lot of situations where he gets to make plays. And I think this kid really puts himself on the map more than what he has already done. So that's my take. My offensive, defense, MVP, my score prediction. Thanks to everybody in the chat for everybody listing their uh their predictions, their their scores, and all that stuff. We appreciate y'all for tuning in. This this game is a little bit this this show was a little bit more calm tonight because we had some good film to go and look at. You know, there were some bad things and some good things that happened in this Ole Miss game, but it was one of those games where more good, even in the first half when we could not get those points on the board, there was just. You just kept seeing the growth, the steady growth and confidence being built. The more we were making plays, the more that the defense was getting stops, the more energy that was being thrown from the sidelines onto the field. So I'm excited That's the way it about should this be. weekend. We should be calm. We should be. This is how it should always be. No and, stress. And, and, and I mean, I love going and love looking at how LSU is playing and looking at how we're playing, looking at our records, looking at how we both jumped into the conference schedule, knowing that they're coming. To the tea time this year, and the way that game ended last year, this these are the type. Of, I'm not skipping games. I'm just saying this is the type of energy I want about my team. Looking at other teams perform, Auburn didn't look good against um A and M this past weekend in the second half, but they're still figuring it out. The you conference know? is wide open. It's, there's it's wide there's open. not there's not there's not one dominant team in this conference. It's wide open for anybody. Right, to take and it. week four, and that's how that's honestly how I want it. I, I remember we would be dominating teams and sitting two in the first half, you know, in the second half, all those. It felt good in those moments. But then when we got to see teams that could keep up with us athletically late in the season, we didn't have the endurance. We didn't have the mental endurance 
let alone the physical endurance to play teams for four quarters. And we were in games where if we played teams for four quarters, we would we should have been blowing them out regardless, but we just did it. So I like this mentality. I like how open it is. Week four, we're answering questions. We still have a few questions, but we're answering questions. And I think our team is, is getting is getting better. And I think and uh, I see the comment. I'm sorry, Monkey Two. Don't forget Texas A&M. I'm telling you right now, go watch Texas A&M game um, against Auburn. Auburn beat themselves a lot in that early in that second half. And um, I I like our chances right now. With if we can continue this progression as far as growth, um, I, I like our chances. And Coach Saban, and, and this is how I'm gonna end it tonight, man. Today, Coach Saban made a, a solid statement in uh, Coach the Coach Saban show. He said, um, he told the team after the game, I believe in you. The staff believes in you. If we can trust, if you can trust play calls and we can trust you to execute consistently with confidence, this team can be one of the best teams I've ever coached. That's from Coach Saban's mouth. That's what he told. He said this team, he didn't say we can be, you know, he said this team can be one of the best teams that I ever coached. Do y'all believe in that statement? I believe in you. This staff believes in you. If you can trust the play calls and execute consistently with confidence, this team can be the best team I've coached. Super yeah, I mean, super chat. Shout out to my boy Trouble Man. This is the type of show that football fans need. Y'all keep it real, especially Coach J. Much respect, y'all. Shout out to you, man. Trouble Man. Shout out, Trouble Man. Shout out. out, Trouble. Yes, man. Just beat the team. Just beat the team who choose to face us. Facts. Antonio, that's the mentality that we need to adapt as a as as a program and also as a fan base. Let's 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 Georgia Georgia's more worried about us than we're worried about them, guys. I promise you. And I, I think college football is more worried about us than we're more than we are. You know, we're worried about them. We're wor- more worried about our team, you know, than other teams. And I think this team showed us this weekend, this weekend that they are really making the steps. They they if they if they can do this again, second half again against Mississippi State, I have confidence in this team. A lot of confidence. Yeah. Can this can this team be what Ohio State was in 2014? How they struggled early in the season, had a had a season loss to Virginia Tech, a game they should have had no business losing to. But then mm-hmm. all of a sudden, late game in the stretch, they just went on a tear, dominated. Wisconsin 59 nothing. Obviously, they beat us. We should have won that game. We were up 21-6. Yeah. I still don't know how we lost that game. And then, like, obviously, what they did for in the national championship game, and they're considered as one of the best teams ever, with obviously one of the most talented teams ever. So, yeah, you know, we'll be I, in I'm, that same bracket. You know? I'm excited, bro, because we I, we have the same situation at quarterback. You know, they ended up beating us with Cardell Jones. You know, he, guy, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And he was – you look at what his – he was able to do on the field. Yeah, he was a mobile guy, but – his arm talent wasn't there. He wasn't as fast as Miro. He, I mean, he had the same amount of weapons, same caliber offensive line. We should be able to be successful with this offense, more than successful. We should be able to dominate. And that don't dominate don't mean putting up 50 points a game. Ole Miss was averaging 51 a game before they came to see us. Doesn't mean that the way you can't be balanced, you know, against talented teams. So um, as we close out, Coach Jay, take it away, man. Tell the people where they can find you, man, and how they can continue to support you, brother. Yeah, they, yeah, you guys can find me on Twitter, Gent716. If you want to try to get in touch with me, if you want to try to have any sort of conversations, whether it's good or bad, Twitter is where you, but the best place you can do it, Gent716. And then, of course, YouTube, if you want to see a more uncensored version of me, uh, where you can start seeing some potential yelling, um, all of the above, you could see that at Gent Sports. Uh, we definitely have a fun time on that channel. Um, and then, of course, Gmail, if you want to get it for business, uh, Jarek946 at gmail.com. That's a bet. Coach Sean, take it away, man. Tell the people where they can find you, brother. Hey, I'm fam on Facebook. Anyone want to tap in? I'm here. I roll tied to everyone in the chat. Big thank you to Kyle Henderson. First, first and foremost to him for giving us this opportunity. Talk a little football on the platform. And uh roll tied to you all. Facts, facts. And y'all already know where y'all can find me. At Coach Smook on every platform, man. That's Kick, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, um, Twitter. Instagram everywhere. Uh doing the content heavy. Um last week's live game preview was crazy. It was awesome. We had a nice turnout. We actually had like 400 some people in that live. So it was good talking to those people. Um and, and interacting. Uh check out some of these highlights that we're going to be posting soon here on our TikTok over there on Coach Smooth's TikTok and on the YouTube channel. 
Um, we got a lot of content coming out, Alabama centric uh, content, and um, yeah, man, that's where you can find me, man. And and once again, shout out to uh, Kyle Henderson, um, and Bama football on YouTube, which is Kyle Henderson's network, man. Y'all see the content that he posts every day, and it's is nothing but quality, man. Nothing but quality. And um, with this team that we have together now, man, as you guys said, man, we we do a lot. We don't get to rehearse this. This is straight impromptu. We we come in with a few topics, and it is because we we watch the game. We watch the game, good and bad. It's not it's not all good, and it's not all bad. We take it for what it is, and we just give our perspective, y'all. And we appreciate y'all for supporting that and um rocking with us. And with that being said, we got the ten dollars super chat. I thought we already got it. Oh yeah, we got the ten dollars super chat, Antonio. Yeah. Hey, Antonio, keep talking about um posting these random numbers, man. What are you talking about, brother? <laughs> Roll Tide, man. Hey, shout out to everybody in the chat once again, man. Appreciate y'all for pulling up. Roll Tide and catch y'all next week, man. Roll Tide.